This video describes Rogerian argument and the technique of planting naysayers in your writing, enhancing your persuasiveness. As this slide explains, Carl Rogers pioneered a very simple yet powerful method of therapy called empathetic listening. Empathy, of course, is different from sympathy because you actually feel what the other person feels, whereas sympathy merely imagines the feelings. To listen with empathy, then, means to fully understand how the other person views the world. Rhetorical theorists adapted Rogers' methods into Rogerian argument, a form of argument in which you consider multiple points of view, including opposing views, and then rebut them. To put it another way, you put a naysayer or counter-argument in your writing and then respond to it. This cartoon from Gerald Graff's book, They Say, I Say, nicely illustrates the idea of planting a naysayer in your writing. When you anticipate that your reader will have an, an objection, you can disarm the reader by stating that objection in your writing and then answering it convincingly. I really like naysayers because of their benefits to writing. Theoretically, naysayers can help you greatly develop your thesis support. If you make an argument in paragraph 1, present a naysayer in paragraph 2, and then respond to that naysayer in paragraph 3, then you have two more paragraphs worth of content and support than you would have had without adding the naysayer in response. In the process, you answer the audience's objections or questions, taking away potential reason they might disagree with your arguments. How do you come up with naysayers? First, you could conduct some research. As you encounter different points of view on your topic, you might decide to use some of them as naysayers that you then rebut. You may not know the different sides of the debate on your topic before researching it, but you should learn enough about the topic to write about multiple perspectives on it. Second, you can imagine what your reader might think in response to your claims or ideas, express those thoughts as naysayers, and then respond to them, much like the writer in the cartoon earlier. Lastly, you might talk through your ideas with different people and get their perspectives and reactions. If you can't imagine what different audiences might say, then you may need to learn more about them by talking to them. Once you identify and develop a naysayer, you need to respond effectively. Obviously, you can disagree with the naysayer and argue why it is incorrect and your original argument still stands. But sometimes you may need to concede the point and agree with the naysayer. Perhaps it is such a strong point that you can't rebut it. But maybe your overall argument still outweighs the other side of the deb debate despite this irrefutable point. Third, you can both agree and disagree, validating some parts of the naysayer's argument but countering other parts. This is often a great approach as it builds goodwill and shows fairness, objectivity, and intellectual sophistication. In summary, I assign a Rogerian argument and teach the concept of naysayers every semester because it can help you develop more content, better content, and more effective persuasion.